Deutschlandfunk. Ja, willkommen zum 23C3 Interview hier bei uns beim Deutschlandfunk. Neben mir steht Stephen A. Balaban. Oh, just Stephen. And now I switch to English. It's not the very best, um, sorry, but I hope you can understand me. Um, Stephen, um, I attended your talk about the real wearable devices. And you had the, yes, you had the Google Glass for some time. Yes, tell us, um, what is it to use Google Glass? What is Google Glass? And um, you had one example here and show it to us. All right, well, let me, I can, I can go and grab yes, it. Yes, um, get it. <laughs> all right. Um, so Google Glass is, to be clear, Google Glass is a new wearable computer manufactured by Google. Yes. Um, and uh, what is it on the inside? It's really just um, basically the guts of an Android phone. Um, and it, it runs the same Android operating system that uh, your normal, you know, Google Android phone would, would be running. This is what a pair looks like right here. Yes. Um, it looks like, um, yes, like a, a normal glass, a little kind thinner. Of, looks like kind of a more cyber version of yeah so it looks a little it's, science fiction yeah you know you're supposed you're not supposed to wear it with glasses technically yeah um you're you know they, they i think that they're they're having some prescription lens ones come out but yeah this is what it looks like you can see it kind of gets in in front of your eye a little bit yeah. and what does it do yeah um, um so what what what, what, what google glass is capable of doing is um it, it's got a few different sensors it's got a camera so you can take pictures and video. Um, it's got a, it's got an IMU, which means that it's an inertial measurement unit. It can do, you know, accelerometer, gyroscope for doing head tracking. Um, it has uh, some internal memory for storing those photos. It has a display for displaying information, pop-ups, photos that you take. Um, it has a speaker system. Um, they recently released an earbud for listening to music. Um, it also has a GPS in it, but that's not kind of public. Uh, but that was revealed in a, in a teardown of the device that it does, in fact, have a GPS chip. Okay. Um, so it looks, yes, very technical. Um, um, what does it do or what did you do with this device in the time you, can, uh, you have used it? Um, and a very important question, is it um, working every time? Is it always on? Um, yeah, so um, by default, Google Glass is not an always-on device. It's meant to be on some of the time. It's meant to um, kind of say, okay, well, let's take a picture now. Let's record a short video. Um, let's receive a tweet, and then it goes off. And, and that's basically the, the standard use case for Google Glass is a sometimes-on wearable computer. Okay, and when you had it on your face or on your nose, um, walking through Silicon Valley or come from Silicon Valley, um, how was it? Um, did the people look tr um, troubled um, when, you, when they see you with this device? And yes, what do you think? Is it a good feeling to, um, to live with Google Glass in the world, or is it strange? Right. Um, so I definitely remember one of my first times wearing it in public, not in Silicon Valley, was when I was uh, coming home from a friend's wedding um, at uh, uh, Newark uh, Airport. In, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and I was walking around with it, and people were, this is, this is back in the early days, so this is back in a April. Uh, so this is before it's early day. this is well, you know, the, for this device, right? It was one of the first, one of the first ones outside of, of Google. And I remember walking around, and people just staring like I was uh, some kind of monster or I don't even know. Yeah. yeah, it was bizarre. But you know, you go to Silicon Valley, or you know, but the, at the end of the day, people would come up and say, "Hey, you know, what is that? Um, uh, what are you wearing on your face? I'm curious." So it, I think that people were more curious then frightened, um, uh, but it was also quite interesting to be, you know, in Silicon Valley and still have people, you know, I'd be walking down University Avenue in Palo Alto, which is kind of the main strip for kind of startup companies there, and uh, to have people there ask me about it, I was like, oh God, I, you know, I'm, I'm from Vermont, which is a small state in, in the United States, and uh, people, 
didn't have the same curiosity. It was, it was kind of more bizarre to them. Yes, uh, and in your talk you said um, there's one more point, it's about the usability. Um, there are two ways to use it, with voice recognition and yes, with your fingers. Yeah. Um, describe the two ways and <laughs> what's the one is better um, in comparison to the other way. Um, yeah, so I mean I guess for, to, I, could, I, could, I could just show the basic two use cases. So one would be uh, I would wear the device like this and I could scroll back and forth. There's a touchpad on the side. I could press a button on the top to, to capture an image. I can hold it to take a video. Uh, so this is, that's one way of interacting with the device. The other way would be to, um, and I, unfortunately I'm not kidding you, I would tilt my head back and then it would activate something that would be listening to my voice and then I would say, okay glass, take a picture or okay glass, record a video. How people react? Um, let's just say this, when I'm in a public location, I will never use the voice commands. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, um, one negative point about was uh, uh, battery life. Um, how long can you use Google Glass in normal use? Yeah, so for normal use, which is the sometimes on, it turns off intermittently, um, use case, you get about, let's say, eight hours of, of battery life, so almost a full day. Um, but for the stuff that I was doing, which was kind of hacking the device and then, you know, doing things like taking a picture every four seconds or, uh, you know, basically trying to record my entire day, that would last approximately an hour and a half. Okay, so that's not much. No, uh, to, to be recording all the time, it's not much. For doing a full video, it's about an hour as well. So for the always on use case, it's, 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 I, it's obviously not designed for that and um, yeah. Yes, but you gave the uh, right hint. Uh, you said always on device, you um, hacked the device, um, you um, put on a software that takes a picture every second or so and you showed a little video and it was a little frightening because it Yes, the picture showed everything you have seen and all the time. It was a 24-hour video, it was a loop. And yes, what, what, did, uh, uh, what pictures showed, um, or what was on the pictures, um, what, is, what is a frightening point about it? Um, so yeah, like you said, I, I, during the talk I, I, I demoed basically what I call a live stream, which is a, a full day log of everything that I've done, taking a picture every few seconds. Um, and you, you know, like I said, you can't really do that with this because this can only do that for about an hour and a half. And so, um, uh, you know, w when you when you look at those those live streams and you know you start to see things like okay I brought out my cell phone I could see I could see the emails on my cell phone I could see the um, the text message that I was sending at the moment I could see um, if I bring out a credit card I can see the entire full credit card with the entire information on the device and this, these are things that you see naturally but you don't realize and if you're logging them it can be very frightening so it would be a nice method to bank robbery, um, to stand behind a person at the ATM, looking on the PIN number, getting the card maybe? Um, so I, I think that that's still, that that's not actually uh, uh, still viable just in terms of th they can't see the PIN that you're, you're entering in. Um, but let's say, you know, Usually you wouldn't think twice about, let's say, typing your password into, into your computer if someone's standing by there. You, know, you might ask them to look away, but you say, oh, well, I can type faster than they can see. Well, when you start recording everything then they can, and, and they can play that back, maybe that's not the case anymore. Okay, the second frightening thing was uh, um, the number plate recognition um, you showed in your talk. Right. Can you describe it? Yeah, sure. Um, so, once again, I, I took one of these, these live feeds that I had generated and, you know, I was just driving down the 101, which is a, a, a main highway in California where I'm, where I'm from. And, um, you know, I, I said, well, imagine a horrible use case where somebody decides to do an automated license plate recognizer that takes license plates recognizes what the numbers are and then uploads that to a database with the GPS locations just because they can. I mean, there's for no other reason than this would be, let's say, 200 lines of code to implement, I could imagine. Um, and, you know, this is um, possible by an always-on device. 
Uh, so you know that is scary, and, and that kind of needs to, uh, to some degree, uh, if that's possible, uh, I, that may may be problematic. I don't know. Yes, maybe, but um, luckily um, the battery um, does not hold or last this long to um, to do something really. Uh, Yes, frightful things. But you developed another device, and uh, it's a device you are wearing on your head. Right. Uh, it's a lambda head, right? Correct. What is the difference to Google, to Google Glass? Okay, so um, you know, like was previously stated, this device gets about an hour and a half if you're going to take a picture every four seconds. Um, Whereas this device, and I, I also have another, uh, another prototype right here. This is one of the first prototypes that I made uh, of, the, of, of this device. This device here gets approximately um, 16 hours uh, uh, of, of recording. So that, that, the, the battery there is, is significantly more, right? I mean, you know, this is a 587 milliamp hour battery. Um, I can set this one up with a 2400 milliamp hour battery comfortably, which is, you know, more than four times uh, the, the battery, the raw battery capability. And this has certain optimizations in terms of it doesn't have a display. It doesn't do some of the other fancy things that glass does behind the, behind the scenes. So um, that's basically, you know, what, what I ended up using to actually log these live streams. So I didn't use a glass to log the live streams. I used this device and this device to, uh, to, to log those images. All right. Um, now we have here these three samples. Um, let's talk about privacy. Um, how and somebody on the street, some stranger, um, can recognize you are recording, you are taking pictures. Is there some signal sent out, light, um, maybe a red light uh, flashing on the camera? We have red lights. What do you think? Um, is there, a, or is there something? Um, yeah. So, uh, well, I mean. For example, on that camera, it does not have a red light that's visible to, to us. It's a but, but the, you know, so there's some interesting points here, which is um, if somebody wants to be malicious, right, they can always desolder or remove all of the red lights for, for any system. So you can, you, you, if, if somebody is going to be malicious with recording, they can always come up with a way to disable that light if they have control over the device, which they do. And uh, in general, there's, there really isn't a way for you to. Uh, Guarantee with 100% certainty that somebody's going to somebody's not going to disable an LED. So what Google did with this device is not have an LED, but have a software, um, you know, software system that enables the display here to to let other people know that you're recording. Um, with the, the Lambda hat currently, we don't have any kind of external indication of recording, and so I think. I think that's that's probably going to be the way um, things move as we move towards an always-on uh, wearable uh, world. Um, so, um, is it true? Maybe in two years, four years, five years, we will have always-on devices, and we know they are always on, so we doesn't need a signal, an indicator. Um, I think that the one of the most important indicators. Um, Honestly, is not actually to the people external that you're recording, but to the people who are using the device. Because let's remember that 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 as far as like a violation on privacy, this is probably more of a violation on my privacy than it is on your privacy. Because if I'm seeing you in a public place, you're already kind of um, controlling and, and modifying your behavior to 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 be acceptable. Whereas um, you know when I'm just purchasing an item with a credit card. I'm not seeing your credit card number. I'm seeing my credit card number, right? So uh, the, the thing that's really important is that I know that it's recording because I need to make sure that I need, you know, to know, okay, well, is this spy on me right now? <laughs> okay. Um, but luckily, again, um, these, all these devices are not so fancy at the moment. They are very expensive. They last not very long. So what do you think in which state with wearable computers we are? Can you, yes, given similarity, um, can you say what will we get in five years and 10 years? 
Um, so I, I can say that there are there, there, there are some devices out there that are special purpose for taking a picture every few seconds um, that are already kind of already out there and at, in a sub five hundred dollar price range. Um, the the lambda hat that we're currently going to be flying out to China to 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 manufacture is going to be in in a sub three hundred dollar price range, and so that's going to be in the next kind of twelve to eighteen months. So as far as like price and what's available now. Uh, the you know these devices are probably um, available and inexpensive. Yes. So maybe in five years, everybody of us is wearing such a device. Yeah, possibly. I, I think that um, it, it, if it provides enough value to to people in terms of uh, the ability, you know, the abilities that it gives you in terms of reflecting on your life, being able to remember every moment, you know, imagine being able to go back to it and say, okay, who are the people that I've talked with at uh, CCC in, in 2013? It'd be fantastic to have a log of, of those people, of those conversations. Um, it, so long as it provides enough value, I think that most people will be wanting to use some device like that. What value is it you're talking about? What is a very, yes, good purpose for me as an individual to wear such a device? To remember my day? Or what is it? Yeah, so uh, there's a few different ones. I mean, one is to remember your day. Um, I think that these types of devices are going to enable people who, for example, have Alzheimer's or um, have prosopagnosia, which is the inability to recognize faces, letting them be able to say, okay, well, have it whisper in their ear or tell them, okay, these are the people that you're talking with, give you kind of live reminders of things that you need to do um, without having to kind of like take out a phone or I think I think that that kind of thing is actually extremely useful and um, will, will probably be not not just for not just not not even just for people with Alzheimer's and, and the blind but also for you know just to get a reminder of your day to kind of say okay Stephen this is what you need to do next you've got a meeting at 315. Okay um, let's talk about the other side Whereas a benefit, there must yeah. be the other side. Correct. Um, what about the manufacturers? If it gets online, if your data gets um, streamed into uh, to some servers, maybe from the manufacturer, maybe from some um, governmental um, agency, um, so uh, yes, the potential is very, very huge. I think. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I've been doing with with my prototypes of, of the Lambda hat is not specifically not having it upload to this upload to any server. So all of the data that I've been logging has been recorded locally to the device and then is transferred locally from that device to my computer and all the processing is done within that system. And um, basically I, I think that we're moving towards a future where instead of uploading all of your data to Google, which they want, Google wants you to upload the data to them, you're going to be managing that kind of in a more um, distributed way, in a way that you can have more control over, as opposed to kind of what we see today where Facebook and Google kind of own all of your data. I think that th this type of data is going to be things that, are, that we reclaim from, from these companies. Yes. Um, last topic. Um, the devices with Uplink will come for sure, I think. Um, yeah. what's, what will be the next steps? Um, should, should there be something, um, yes, regulated with the manufacturers to regulate the data streams, um, to protect the privacy? Must, um, is there a must for governmental steps? What do you think? How we can, um, yes, get around with the privacy concerns? Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm always personally wary of, of legislative and regulatory solutions um, just because, uh, it, at least I'm, I'm from the United States, and uh, uh, it, it's kind of rare to see a, a well-implemented government uh, regulation or legislation. I, I'm sure that there's probably some similarities to, 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 to Europe um, in that respect. No comment. And, okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm wary of it, uh, but I'm also aware, and I think that, you know, as a community, the wearable, com the, the wearable computing manufacturers are totally aware that um, uh, 
both the, the citizens as well as our elected leaders, you know, are kind of saying, hmm, you know, we, we kind of want to do something here. We don't have all the facts. And so we're definitely cognizant that it's kind of a, an uncertain regulatory environment, an uncertain uh, kind of legal and political environment with respect to these types of systems. And so it's something that we always kind of keep in mind. Okay, thank you very, very much. You're welcome. And hope to see you next year on the same Congress. I'll, I'll be here next year. Thanks. Thank you very much.